we've been taking a look at state management in React using TypeScript and looking at a bunch of different state managers. Today, we're gonna look at Valshio. So, what we're gonna do is re-implement a to-do list application using Valshio, and we've got a nice little starter point here. I'm just gonna clone that. It's gonna take care of a bunch of stuff so that we can concentrate on looking at the state manager itself. So first off, I'm gonna go in my temporary directory and then clone the base project, and I'll call this one to do Valshio because that's the name of the state manager we're gonna look at today. So let's go jump into Valshio and bring up VS Code. Now I could just do yarn to kind of get everything set up, but while I'm here, I might as well do yarn add and then bring in all of the libraries that I need to make this happen. In this case, that just means Valshio. There's no Valshio React or any of that. It's just all built into one thing. And it's actually really small, so that's kind of cool. All right, while we're waiting on that, let's go over and take a look at our store.ts file. That's kind of where the magic is happening. So we have at the top, our interface for to-do item. It's got a number, a text, and a done. And then it, there's a bunch of helper functions here. The reason that these exist is because I just don't wanna deal with the going through all of this code. What we really wanna know is how the state manager manages state, how you do methods and that sort of stuff. So this is these are some helper functions for us to make that quicker. All right, let's go take a look at how we're doing. All right, great. So let's do yarn start. So in this React app, we've got four, well, really five components. There is the main app component. There is a, a toggler for dark or light mode that just happened to come with the template that I used to set up the app. So I thought it was nice, I just kind of left it in. Uh, this top component is called the top bar. It includes that toggler and it includes a load button that's gonna go off and get some JSON so they can show you how to do asynchronous work. It's got a list of to-dos and it's got an ability to add a new to-do, but of course none of this works because there's no state manager. So let's go fix that. We will go and close that out since we don't need that anymore. And I'll go and create a new comment down here to say this is gonna be the Falchio implementation. So really we wanna start with defining the store. So let's go and create an interface in TypeScript, we'll call it store. And in there we'll have a list of the to-dos as well as a new to-do which is gonna be a string. And I'll bring in a function called add to do, or, and it's going to return a void. And now I actually wanna go and implement on this. So up at the top here, we'll import proxy from Valshio, and that's how you create a new store. So go down here again, and we'll say that the store is a proxy, or in proxy will result in a store, <laughs> and you give it the type in here of the store. You can call it whatever you want, I just call it store. Okay, so we'll say that we have a to-dos, and it's an empty array, it's a new to-do, and that nice, it's hinting this stuff for me. Make that an empty string, and then add to-do, and in this case, not gonna take any arguments, but what it is gonna do is it's gonna set store.todos equal to the add to do, which is a nice little handy helper function up here. It takes a list of todos and just appends one to it. So let's just do store.todos and then give it the new text. So that's also store.new to do. And then we'll set the new to-do to an empty string so we can kind of see and something makes it for a nice user experience if you wanna go and add multiple to-dos. Okay, we got our store created, so let's export that. Okay, let's take a look over an app. So obviously we're gonna to need to add a provider here because every state manager has a provider. Psych! No, we won't. There's no provider for Valshio, so awesome. That means no extra providers up here. There is a shocker provider, but that's really just for the UI and the theming, not to worry. So, okay, let's go over here to, to do add. And first thing we need to do is import the store. 
And then we need the React hook that's gonna connect us with that proxy. And in this case, that's called use proxy. And it's also in Valshio. And what that does is give you a read only snapshot of the store. So we'll do use proxy and then give it the store. And now we've got this read only snapshot. So we will go and add a value which is a snapshot new to do. So we're getting that type hinting there because of TypeScript, really nice. And then when we get a change, we're gonna take an event. And the way that you set something is then you just say store dot new to do equals event target value, just like that. All right, let's go to the on click handler for add to do. So let's go here to uh, store dot add to do easy peasy all right let's take a look at our running app and i'm going to fill that in and what i'm expecting to see here is that when i click add to do it's going to set that to null or empty right or empty string so it's and it does so that plus plus one to that cool it just means that it's added it to the to-do list but we're not actually connecting that to-do list to anything. So let's go do that next. All right, let's bring in use proxy and store, and then go back there and grab the snapshot, pop that into to-do list items, and then pop this down here for the to-dos. And we can remove this typing since we get it for free. And we're looking pretty good. Okay, so let's start off with checkbox. So the checked is gonna be whether it's done, but we need an ability to toggle it. So we need a toggle in here. It should take a, an ID. All right, let's go implement on that since it's clearly not implemented right now. So we'll go over here and we'll say we have a toggle. It's gonna to take an ID. And while we're here, we might as well go and add remove and update. And the only difference is that update's gonna take a string. All right, let's jump down here and start implementing on this. So toggle is gonna to do toggle to do. It's gonna take an ID, which is a number, like that. And then two more, we got remove, which is gonna remove it to do. And then we got update, which is gonna update a to do, but that takes a text string. So we gotta add that. And then finally, piece of text. Okay. Let's go back over our to-do list. Hey, it looks like that's happy. So let's continue on. Let's do uh, on change. Again, we'll take an event and we'll do store.update, the given ID, and then the event target value. And then down here on the on click, we'll do store.remove, and then give it the ID. Easy peasy. Let's go check this out. So if I go and add to do, hey, there we go. Can we toggle it? Sure we can. Can we change the text? Sure we can. Can we delete it? Yes, we can. Awesome. So now the only thing that is left is this load button. So we'll go over here to top bar and let me show you the JSON that we're gonna go load. I just wanna show you how asynchronous behavior works. It's very difficult, it requires thunking and all that. No, it doesn't, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so we've got a bunch of to do's, they match exactly the to do format. And we just want to go and fetch that. So I'll go and copy this, create an on load handler, which does a fetch. No, I don't know what, <laughs> what? get heap statistics. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's kind of neat, actually. Then we'll get our response back. We'll convert that to JSON. 
And then with that, we will have a, uh, a list of to-dos. Let's just be nice about it. Say that we have a to-do array that we got back. And we want to do a store.todos equals data. And VS Code, for once in its life, was super helpful. I'm just kidding. I love VS Code. Uh, to bring in store and to-do up there, so that's great. Let's go over here to the click of the button and load that in there. I love my, me some VS Code. It's fine. Okay, so load, and there you go. Ah, voila. It went and overwrote all of the to-dos with the to-dos from the JSON file. So there you go. Now, you know, as you've seen here before, we could go and add, I could add, go and add a load in here with the URL. It's really totally up to you. Uh, Valshio is super friendly when it comes to building out your API the way that you want it. Okay, so I certainly hope you've enjoyed learning about Valshio and seeing how it works with our to-do model. Let's talk a little bit about the pros and the cons and the comparison with other state managers. To me, one of the big pros is it's just that easy to use. As you've seen, it's really easy to get started with and get an implementation going. It's also really, really small. It's about 5 KB, which is about one of the smallest state managers that we're gonna look at. It also has no provider, which I think is really critical. We started to see this expansion of providers at the app level, and these are components that the app really doesn't know or care about. It just has to be there in order to get that data sprinkled throughout the React tree. If you don't need a provider, then any component can talk to any other component through a Valshio store, which is really much easier to use and cuts down on that provider creep. The only con I can think of is it just hasn't seen as much adoption as we'd like to see. Currently at the making of this video, it was about a thousand downloads a week, which is not great. And I would love to see the exposure in this video get Valshio a little bit more credit. I think it deserves a lot of it. But I wanna hear what you think. Be sure to put that in the comments section down below. Any comments or suggestions or concerns or ideas you have, feel free to let me know. You can also jump on the Discord server. There's a link to that in the description. Have a chat with us directly. That's always great. Of course, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. From me to you, in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.